Hello everybody and welcome to today's broadcast. You've seen the title, The Canadian Church Will Forever Be Fighting in Prayer Until We Learn to Be Organized. <laughs> wow, I got one of the greatest response to our series as we began to enter into this subject of how the world belongs to the organized and nations belong to people of organization and leaders of organization and I want to go a little deeper with you today I want to start by giving a quote that I recently posted on social media that's gotten a lot of attention and and it says this when the church refuses to equip people of character and skill to give leadership to society the church will pay the price for this by the worst of society giving leadership to us all <laughs> wow when the church refuses to equip believers and organize them properly and send them into society there if we don't do that there is a void left in society and the worst of society will rule essentially the principle is this that there is nowhere in on earth where there is the absence of a kingdom there is either the kingdom of darkness and its culture and its leaders or there is the kingdom of light it just depends who goes in there and occupies territory so the world doesn't belong to just praying people but it actually belongs to those who are organized and show up I mean history has, has taught us this I want to give you another quote now there's gonna be a few that's why I've got my some of my notes in front of me today but here it is when men with moral values refuse to come together and be organized they will pay the price for it by enduring the rule of the worst of men sort of similar to the previous quote when men with moral values refuse to come together and be organized they will pay the price for it by enduring the rule of the worst of men leadership belongs to the organized and when you have people that refuse to come together in unity and be organized in society although they may have good hearts they may even have great belief systems I mean that's the church uh, we know we have righteousness and the principles of the kingdom that make for a great society we have all that but as long as we keep uh, in a state of division locking it all up in just in our churches if it doesn't get out into society in an organized way where we actually occupy territory we just won't be the leaders of the nation and we will forever be praying for God to come down and change things out there while the world belongs to the organized there are two I've broken down the two absences of the local church which have caused our nation let's focus on the nation of Canada to go on a track of momentum into evil that now we're struggling to turn around and I'll touch on that concept as well but the two great absences of the local church would be as follows number one our default setting, our charismatic default setting to praying for God to come down and do what he has commissioned us to do. That means praying for him to disciple the nation, praying for God to change people's minds, praying for God essentially to fix everything. We have thought that our role as the church in the nation has been primarily to pray for God to do it or to pray for the government to do it. <laughs> We've also begun a, a trend of if we just pray for leaders, if we just pray for a righteous prime minister, then suddenly everything will change. It's a, another one of our Canadian charismatic defaults when God has clearly commissioned the church to go and disciple nations. So if we don't get organized and show up, we aren't going to see tangible change in society. A good example of this, and you know, this isn't meant to bash anybody. Uh, I respect many of the leaders who were behind this and, and preached about this and practiced it and mobilized their people, but the idea of, you know, when, when Justin Trudeau was originally running for for office, there was a commission given to the body of Christ to go out and pray around the voting booths, as if last minute prayer while people were voting was going to swing the election. Ooh, I just, even saying it, 
the, the sound of the foolishness of it in the sense that what you're actually doing is praying that God will interrupt people as they approach the, the time to vote and he will just enter their mind and they will say, I don't know why I'm voting differently, but something has taken over me and I'm voting differently. <laughs> this, is, this is just not so. And do I believe that prayer around voting booths is effective to some degree? Absolutely. Maybe there are people on the fence about things. Maybe God can touch some people's hearts, but that just is not enough to win elections or sway the minds of a majority of people who have already made up their mind based on facts. <laughs> okay, so this is one of the great absences of the church, is thinking that if we pray about it, that will swing an election. If we pray pray about it. That will cause all things to just come into order. And, and I remember when the vote, the, the prayer around the booth was happening and I thought, man, what it takes to swing the minds of Canadians in voting, you've got to have a four or five year lead up to an election where information and facts have to be dispersed throughout the population until we have a critical mass of voters who understand who to vote for and whose hearts our four moral, godly kingdom principles. Well, <laughs> I won't get into this on this broadcast, but that would be the first absence of the church. The second absence is the refusal to pursue public offices and leadership positions. All seven mountains of society are important, not just the political mountain. And when we as the church refuse to run for offices, refuse to get involved, refuse to seek leadership positions in education, in business, in all seven mountains, we have left that area of sociology. We have left that area of society empty and void of leadership. And then we remain in our churches praying for God to come down and give leadership there. Instead, the void that the church leaves is filled by the kingdom of darkness and its leadership. Where we are absent, the kingdom of darkness rushes in. Man, so the refusal to pursue public offices and leadership positions has also been one of the great absences of the church. We, we didn't mean any harm, we just didn't know any better. At that time, we thought that the advancement of the kingdom was all about just having more church services and praying that God will touch the nation and waiting for his soon return. Now, as we've come through this wonderful kingdom era, we understand that it's not throwing away the local church, it's not throwing away prayer meetings, but it's adding to those things with now tangible, aggressive approach to society, getting involved, you know, helping to sway the minds of people to righteousness, and also pursuing and to occupy kingdom positions, pursuing leadership positions in society. And to do that, we must be organized. We must be aggressive. Essentially, nations and the rise and fall of nations belong to those who push the hardest, who are the most strategic and the most organized. I want to prove this now with a fantastic scripture in Ecclesiastes. Many people don't know that Proverbs and Ecclesiastes are really the wisdom books which is the ability to rule. That's why you'll hear it said throughout the wisdom books, I have seen something under the sun. <laughs> There's those earthly laws and principles again. What is under the sun? That's the earth dimension. The wise king understands that there's above the sun, that, which is just poetic language for the heavenly spiritual dimension. Then underneath the sun is the earthly uh, material dimension that has been given to the sons of men to rule and to manage. That's us, the church. Look at this in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verses 5 to 7. There is an evil that I have seen under the sun, as it were an error proceeding from the ruler. Folly is set in many high places, and the rich sit in a low place. Essentially, the wise king is saying, I've seen an injustice and a common trend under heaven. I've seen something on earth that is a trend. Now look at this. I have seen slaves on horses and princes walking on the ground like slaves. Wow. <laughs> Let me just say that again. I have seen slaves on horses 
and princes walking on the ground like slaves. When we describe slaves on horses, we're talking about the unrighteous, those who are ungodly. They are riding the horses, while the godly ones, the princes, the, the children of God, are walking on the ground like slaves. Here we are, we are princes, we are sons and daughters of God, we are children of God, yet we are behaving as if we're slaves, disorganized, you know, lack of ability to be the head and not the tail in society. We're walking on the ground without shoes, doing things the hard way, while the unrighteous understand that they, if they ride a horse, they can get there faster. <laughs> the principle is this, that just righteousness alone and just being a child of God doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be the head and not the tail in society. The world belongs to the organized. And so the wise king is saying, man, I've seen something so unjust that the children of God, the, the sons and daughters of God that are supposed to be the wisest, the most shrewd, the most organized, are doing life the hard way. <laughs> well, the unrighteous are the head of society and riding proudly on their horses. <laughs> the world belongs to the organized. The wise king is saying this is unjust. <laughs> The number one reason that we lose in life and we have lost our nation has not been a lack of prayer. I believe in prayer for the nation. My parents prayed for the nation. Their parents prayed for the nation. Their parents prayed for the nation. It hasn't been a lack of prayer, but rather it has been a long-standing momentum of evil. And I'm going to get into that on a deeper level, I think, in the next video. But it's been a momentum of evil that has started 20 plus years ago, maybe 30 plus years ago in our nation. There were people and underground movements and small groups of people like Margaret Mead said who were so highly organized in Canada on Canadian soil that they began to make strategic influential efforts to change the fabric of our nation. They began to knock on the doors of Parliament over 30 years ago. They had 10-year plans. They had 20-year plans. They had plans to occupy much key positions in Much Music, MTV. One of our History Maker grads got a key position in Much Music, and I remember <clears throat> he said, Derek, you wouldn't believe it that many of the underground homosexual community has taken the gates of influence in the music industry, in cult, in all aspects of culture. He began to see this and he found it so difficult to bring influence out there because key gates were already occupied. And so all of this actually began 30 plus years ago in Canada. And there's more I'd like to say on that, but I just won't do it on a video recording here. But as people came together with demonic ideologies, demonic agendas and strategies to change laws for the uh, gay marriage, uh, the issue of abortion, you know, all of the big ones that literally are bringing curses upon our culture, all of those big ones began a long time ago with strategic acts, incrementally making changes, banging on the doors of parliament. It began a long time ago when people came together and were organized, demonic ideologies were bought into and infused into the fabric of a nation that has Christian foundations. And before long, it was, it, it was so subtle at first and incremental, and then as it began to become loud, all of us as believers, our jaws dropped when, when we found out that Canada voted this way. We found out that Can Canadians wanted this immorality, and we found out that a small group of strategic organized citizens had pulled the blinders over our eyes, ripped the rug right out from under us, and, and really influenced the entire culture to go a certain direction. In fact, it's, it's, it's become such a momentum of evil in the land that even evil men, as the quote says, have begun to disdain and, and say, what's going on within the culture? Even the unrighteous are saying, what is happening to Canada? And then what we did as Christians is we called a crisis prayer meeting. 
We said we've got to come together and quickly pray before the election. Or if we pray on this location, or if we do these prophetic acts, or if we have these le uh, leaders prophesy into the situation and, and we would put all our resources behind that and once the prayer meeting was over we thought the nation was won back because we thought we had compelled God to come down and change everything only to find out that the next generation was was worse than the last and things just continued on a trajectory uh, trajectory of evil a momentum that is because it's the power of momentum when a nation goes on a direction my friends there's good news Canadian church as we begin to rise up we can change things but we've got to approach the evils of society with a force that is of equal value or greater than the one that caused the problem in the first place <laughs> let me just say that again when it comes to the laws of motion and influencing or redirecting the direction of society the local church the body of Christ in Canada has to raise up a force or an opposing voice of equal value or greater than the current momentum to be able to shift things I've alluded to the laws of motion there when it comes to the transformation of society and so the reason hasn't been a lack of prayer for the for why the nation is at the state in the state that it is and I commend the prayer movement I'm part of the prayer movement I'm a person that believes in praying for the nation but it's going to take so much more than that because the the momentum of evil has only picked up speed and increased we now have to have prayer and strategic systematic organized action over an extended period of time I'm gonna say it again strategic organized action over an extended period of time to begin to sway the momentum back on the course uh, direction towards righteousness let me give you the another quote which is the reason why leadership positions are key for believers when men of ability when I say men, the, when these, these are quoted, of course, we're encompassing women. I don't want to offend anybody out there. We need female and male leadership. Let's just get that bottom line. Uh, when men of ability, when men and women of ability, quality, and character refuse to seek leadership positions or political influence, others who are worse than them will make rules over them. Let me say that one more time. When people of ability, quality, and character refuse to seek leadership positions or political influence, others who are worse than them will make rules over them. This is why, church, we have to adjust our default settings. We have to begin to see things as both spiritual and very practical, very strategic. Because those who are changing our nation have been strategic and have not depended on God to do it. Isn't that interesting? Those who are unrighteous, who are riding horses, are changing the laws. Well, we, the princes, the sons and daughters of God, are walking barefoot like slaves. We're not the head and the tail as of yet. And the culture has changed, and the way culture operates is even though the majority don't believe in some particular evil, as it becomes trendy or as it becomes culture we begin to buy into it and the culture invades the church until we allow the momentum of evil to get greater and greater and greater this is why we've got to adjust our default settings I'm calling on the Canadian church to begin to adjust our default settings from just pray for God to do it and pray for God to take care of that situation to us becoming way more strategic, becoming way more organized. And I'm going to do more than preach to you about this. I'm going to show you what we are doing as a ministry, what has worked in other nations, and what we plan to do in Canada, which is highly strategic and organized as it relates to council groups. And man, we have seen you know what I'm gonna just save it for another video but this is why the church will forever be fighting in prayer we will forever be calling crisis prayer meetings at the last moment to try to get God's arm to pull to twist his arm to come and heal our land and change the land well we're, we're, we're we have been absent 
The healing of the land of Canada, the healing of our nation belongs to a partnership between God and the church. It's not either or, it's both and. Together, as we partner with God, as we pray as if it all depends on God, and then we work and labor as if it all depends on us, the church, that partnership will bring such a healing to the land and such a leadership in the land, Canada will become a model for the other nations of the world, and Canada will fulfill its destiny in, uh, in uh, bringing, bringing healing to the nations, a healing <laughs> to the nations of the world. It's our destiny. It's our DNA. And I want, I want you to join me as we continue to discuss these big issues until Canada comes into its destiny. <laughs> God bless you.